Stefanie Kristóttir heiti ég og er hérna í Fabla Breykjavík og ætla að tala við Basun Lindu sem eru starfsmenn hérna í Fabla og þau koma frá Hollandi og byrjaði að vinna hérna í janúar 2014 og ég langar að spjalla þess við þau á ensku þannig að hérna við til að fer fram á ensku Basun Linda So where are you from? The start point Yeah You start first Okay. So uh, we're both from Holland, and um, actually we, uh, yeah, uh, I used to work in a fab lab uh, mm -hmm. in Holland um, uh, up until a year, two years ago now, almost. So yeah. In Amsterdam? Uh, yeah, so in, in Holland we used to live in Delft and uh, work in Amsterdam. Um, I had a it's a commute of about an hour back and forth. So, uh, yeah, we got it a little bit better here. <laughs> okay, how about you, Linda? Yeah, um, I worked as a, a graphic designer before, um, uh, working in Utrecht, um, which is about an hour and a half away from where we lived, um, tra traveling back and forth. Um, yeah, before we got started here. Okay, and what's your background, Bess? So my background is in uh, electronic design. Um, uh, I studied to be an electrical engineer uh, and uh, did uh, actually my uh, bachelor study was in media technology. Um, and that actually got me started with uh, user design, user interaction design and uh, making prototypes, uh, which then later on became my job. And that's how I got in to, to contact with FabLab. So, Belinda, you just started working in FabLab when you moved to Iceland? Uh, no, I started uh, attending uh, the Fab Academy, which is a study program through the uh, FabLab. Um, and in this study, uh, um, I used my graphic design skills to um, basically improve uh, in uh, three-dimensional designing and to improve uh, working with machines and working with electronics mm -hmm. and um, with that knowledge I uh, uh, started as an instructor in the fab lab. So you kind of you come from different directions but you kind of combine both the art and the kind of engineering yeah. aspect of yeah. fab lab. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you're also a couple Yes. Yep. <laughs> That's the reason why we're both from Holland. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and we both end up here. So yeah. it's just a interesting. Uh, so where did you meet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, so we met in uh, in a bookstore. Yeah. Um, not as um, uh, not as customers, but actually mm. we both worked there. As, as colleagues. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I I already worked there. And uh, then uh, Linda was hired. Mm. That's now eight years ago. Mm. Something about that? Yeah. I think we're hitting the nine. No, I think we're. I think we 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 met about <laughs> ten years ago. Yeah. So we yeah, were. Yeah. We, if you're we, not we started. We didn't start off. Oh, hey, couple. No. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. We, 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 we started yeah. as co-workers, yeah. mm. and uh, uh, over summer uh, we. Uh, yeah, there was actually another funny yeah. story mm. because we. Um, uh, it, it, it ended up that I had plans for the summer, but that got turned over. And um, basically uh, the same thing for me. Yeah. yeah. And, so and I happened to ask her, I had to ask Linda, like, hey, I've got nothing to do for this summer. And mm -hmm. I kind of overheard that you've got nothing to do with, with this summer. You know? Let's let go on holiday. Let's together. go on holiday again. <laughs> yeah, before yeah. you start to be together. Before we were yeah. a couple. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it was a, so it was a long a preparation before. Yeah, we <laughs> had a very, uh, over, over the summer, a few weeks road mm. trips together, yeah. actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Co-workers and friends and then yeah. couple. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, it's just because uh, I know that you love Fab Lab and everything mm -hmm. about it, and yeah. why is it important for the community, for the world? Why is Fab Lab important <laughs> for the world? Uh, yeah. Um, FabLab enables um, mm. FabLab enables individuals to uh, to come and to uh, uh, learn 
uh, at their own pace, at their own convenience, uh, learn the things that they want to learn. Um, I mean, FabLab is not for everyone, but it is for, um, you know, it, it, it allows people to discover themselves, to discover for themselves. So they don't have to be um, uh, that maker, they don't have to be that carpenter, they don't have to be that craftsman. Um, they can be a designer that wants to, uh, you know, prototype their product. Mm. They can be, you know, even that uh, stay-at-home mom that, you know, wants to do something cool for that, do something nice for the house or the walls that she looks at every day. Um, they can come here and, and and learn how to do these things, and they can learn how to do these things themselves. So it's it's very enabling to these people. Yeah. And I think also the versatility of it, it's not just for young people, it is basically for um, about 8 years old till 80 plus, mm -hmm. um, as long as you have the interest uh, to get started and, and, and have an idea on, on, on what your interest is, that's enough to uh, basically walk in here and, and, and sit down. Um, I think for the very young ones, they, they, they start just with an interest of I've seen something neat and can I make something like that? And you'll get people like, I have this broken part at home, can we fix it? Or um, I have this neat idea, um, can we make it, can we design it, can we try it? Um, it, 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 it brings up so many different endless possibilities. Um, and I think that's the main key why it is so accessible to so many people. Mm -hmm. So um, intriguing and interesting. Okay. But why FabLab Iceland? Why did you come to Iceland? Was it like <laughs> yeah, that was uh, when you met Frosty? Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, I, I um, Linda already mentioned Fab Academy. Uh, it's the program she did mm -hmm. when she she came here. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, I've been involved, I, I did Fab Academy, uh, the international teaching program uh, mm -hmm. connected to the Fab Labs throughout mm -hmm. the world. Um, I did that in 2012. Um, then so I, I graduated from that uh, in 2012. Then in 2013, I was a local instructor in Fab Lab Amsterdam. So I had students there, I had student, remote students that I was teaching as well. Um, and I got involved in Fab Academy in the... Uh, in the um, the back end of Fab Academy, so to, to more the organizational side of it. Um, so in that community, I was pretty well known. Uh, I got pretty well known. Um, then that year, uh, 2013, um, uh, there was a Fab Lab conference in Japan. Mm. And so actually, actually this Fab Lab conference is held yearly mm. in different locations throughout the world. Mm -hmm. uh, 2013, it was in Japan. Um, and there I met Frosty, which is the uh, coordinator in Iceland. Hmm? The coordinator in Iceland, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah yes. and also also the he's the he's the, the, the manager of FabLab Bestmanner, uh, which is the first FabLab in Iceland. Mm -hmm. It started in two thousand and eight. Um, and yeah, I just happened to mention to him that I was looking for another job. Mm -hmm. uh, so at that time, I was working. I had been working in Amsterdam already for five mm -hmm. years. Yeah. And it was. I felt it was time for something new. Yeah. yeah. And here in Iceland, they were just uh, planning to get uh, Fab Lab Reykjavik started. Mm. So the job opening was here, and Bas was interested. Mm. And yeah. we both were ready for a new challenge. Yeah. So we just decided to go ahead and move abroad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe from that, because uh, that was the summer of 2000, 2013. Mm. Um, 6th of January 2014, we landed here mm -hmm. in Keplavik and uh, moved in and <laughs> liked me ever since. So. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. I know that uh, Fabla Breakel was located in Breakelt, mm -hmm. one of the suburbs, yeah. for a reason to kind of lift up the spirit in the neighborhood yeah. and you know, kind of empower mm -hmm. it. Yeah. How do you think that? that has worked, and uh, what do you think are the next steps for FabLab in the capital area of Reykjavik? So, for um, I think for this area here, uh, specifically for this area, for this this, this shop area, little it was a little rundown mm -hmm. when we when we came here. Um, then 
also uh, uh, Nilistasa came uh, uh, here as well. Um, there's been, I feel there's been, a, it's been uplifting for this area here. Yeah. Um, it was more, uh, the feeling was more run down. Um, uh, actually, I think it's got a little better hmm. over the time here. Different uh, shops has been uh, opened over the year in this little area. Um, and one of the major uh, ones, of course, is Nilo. But uh, uh, I think uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's been growing. And uh, the nice thing is you get more people around. Yeah. And a lot of people always uh, dropping by the lab, mm -hmm. uh, looking interested in all the little gizmos we have on display. Yeah. And, and, and that's where the interaction starts. Yeah. So I, feel, I, yeah. I feel that's the that's the advantage as well of um, the mm -hmm. Fab Lab here in Breihold, that it's we're on shop front. Mm -hmm. We're open to the street, we're open to the public. And because um, a lot of Fab Labs around the world are hidden away inside schools, inside buildings somewhere. Mm -hmm. You have to f go and find it. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you, have to, you, you, you need to know that you need to go there mm -hmm. before you can go there. Here in uh, Breihold, it's actually people walk by. Mm -hmm. We get people in from the street saying, hey, what's this place? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what can I do here? Um, so of course, always, always yeah. also people asking where did the yeah. library go? But <laughs> I know there has been uh, a lot of people coming here, very large groups and everything, and uh, some people say that we need uh, more fab labs. Yeah, in well, uh, what, we, what, we, what, we, what, we, what we hear a lot is that, why aren't you downtown? Okay. We hear that a lot. Mm. And then you say, but yeah, I mean, hey, you knew how to find us. <laughs> yeah. You got here. And actually, we're quite well connected. There's mm. two bus, there's actually three bus lines stopping mm. in front of the lab. Mm -hmm. um, we've got enough parking space mm. in front you don't have to uh, pay parking, there's no parking meters here. <laughs> um, so in that sense, we are quite accessible. Um, people know where to find us, people know how to reach us. There's, uh, a, there's also like, uh, because I know that the schools, mm -hmm. uh, especially colleges, yeah. uh, you, you want to create a special connection and, and cooperation with yeah. them. How, how is this working? In, how do you see it develop in the future? Um, what I've needs to be done, basically? I think um, looking at what happened over the year, uh, more and more teachers um, are aware of the possibilities within the lab. Uh, our main focus is training, uh, sharing the knowledge of uh, possibilities in Fab Lab, enabling teachers to uh, uh, work on projects with students mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's gonna co come a point when you run up to capacity and uh, uh, I think we have plenty and plenty of schools here in Reykjavik to um, fill up a second fab lab um, getting more classes introduced into digital designing mm -hmm. getting uh, different levels different ages of students introduced in uh, how to work with prototyping um, and I think the more we can spread that knowledge um, and all the possibilities amongst the teachers, uh, the more need there will be in the future for more fab labs. Okay, so training the teacher is like a key, key element. Key Tra key training element the teacher is key element, yeah. but also, um, I mean, training the key teacher is one key element. I think the other key element is um, making it wanted inside the school system. So we have. Uh, so what we're trying to do is to uh, also, you know, when students come in, when people come in, um, uh, yeah, we, we try to get them enthusiastic. So they go back and they tell their parents, "Oh, look, this cool thing that we did." Um, then the idea is then after that, you know, parents are like, hey, "But why aren't why isn't the school doing more of this?" So yeah. there's a re active request to yeah. the school. So we're trying to get it both both, from both sides. Yeah. yeah. So getting yeah. from top down, so we get the teachers interested, mm -hmm. uh, the teachers requesting it, mm -hmm. wanting to have, to have to do more in, this, in, in the, uh, in the fab lab, uh, but also f from the bottom up, mm -hmm. so that the school can see, okay, there's actually demand for this. Mm -hmm. And I think in the long run that will prosper in um, students having more knowledge and ending up uh, developing, innovating new prototypes, um, which will help uh, 
uh, create more entrepreneurs, uh, hopefully more innovation. Yeah. Okay. We've already seen students here uh, from uh, FBN that because of what they did here in, uh, in, in, in FabLab and the things they learned here in FabLab, they got into um, uh, Ascoli Islands and yeah, Ascoli into, into, the, into yeah. the technical studies there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You also work with designers on prototyping. Mm -hmm. So quite, yeah. quite a lot of designers are working with you. And yeah, exactly. We had, we had people in from, uh, uh, we had, I think, three or four projects in home numbers that yeah. were actually made here in the FAP lab. Yeah. Yeah. Were fully yeah. made in the FAP lab. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. And a few more projects uh, where it was not a final product, but more of a stage yeah. to help uh, push them a little bit on board. So where we were and part of design projects. Yeah. Designers and, and, and artists. Yeah. Have some, some prototype designers and some people uh, uh, developing for expositions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So are you going to stay for in Iceland for good? Or are you thinking well, something else in the future? Well, I mean, Iceland is nice. Hmm. Um, but I think at one point the... Um, insane amount of daylight over summer is going to break us up. <laughs> so I don't think we're going to be staying here forever. So it's not the darkness, it's the daylight. It's, it's actually the, the daylight, daylight is more of a problem than the darkness. Yeah, I can handle yeah. darkness, no problem, yeah. but uh, the daylight is more the... Uh, hmm. uh, yeah, and if we have any more winters like last winter, then it's, uh, it, it took a bit long this winter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Where to yeah. next? We but don't know. Lab. Mm -hmm. All the same, you want to work on it? Yeah, it will yeah. probably stay. Uh, our next uh, stint, when it comes along, will, will be fabulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for the interview. And yeah, and yeah. good luck. No problem You're at welcome. all. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank thank you very much. Nice.